Do I have some dead cert techniques and strategies to combat procrastination for you? And this is how I learned them. So let me share this story. Um, you all enjoy it. I think, maybe. Okay, anyway. Um, I pulled a couple of all-nighters. Uh, this is during my university days uh, to get a paper and assignment handed in. And that was typical of me. I would... Um, I would always leave it to the last couple of days and then I'd start work. Usually it would be in an evening, about 5 p.m., work hard, a couple of all-nighters and get something in. And every single time, I'd promise myself I would never do that to me again um, come the next assignment. And I did. But I learned a way to, to not do that. And that's what I'm going to share with you. But here's the story. And, and this is why I learned those things. So I am giving you insight straight away okay anyway anyway so this particular time um it was it was due in midday the assignment i was living about about a 30 kilometer drive away from the university so i had to go in and, and drop it off couldn't afford to be late because when you miss you know the deadline i don't know what other universities are like but my one was that's it unless you've had some pre-agreement or you're involved in a car accident on the way, that, that's gone burger. You, you get a big fat zero for that. So I was, I'd was i handwritten it. I mean, hold on, hold on. We're talking 30 years ago here, just over, over 30 years ago. So so um, most of it had been, all of it had been handwritten. And I was in the process of, of typing it up and, and uh, through word processor and getting that done. And back then I could write a lot faster than I could type. Anyway, I, w I could only get about 70% of the way through typing it. So 70% was typed and printed and ready to go. And the other 30% um, was still handwritten. And that was at the time where I had to leave to travel to university to hand it in. So I took... <laughs> no, no. I took the um, the printed 70%, the handwritten 30%, and I stapled them together, and that's what I drove to university to to hand in. And that, that was at my life, because not only had I done a couple of all-nighters to get to that point, but I was handing it in in a way that was just like, oh my goodness, no. And you could see other works that people had. Um, handed in and they were all without exception all typed out and some of them were bound in nicely and, and everything like this as opposed to my 30% written 70% typed stapled together anyway so at my lowest during that by the way I passed the paper it was all right I think I did I think I did yeah I only failed two and they were early on in my in my years um, at uni expensive hobby that so, and this was later. So yeah, I can say with a high degree of certainty, I, I passed the paper, but that was my lowest step and I promised myself it would never happen again. So I had to come up with tactics and strategies that would work for me to stop me from doing that again. And here they are. Here's the things I came up with that I've since implemented over the last 30 years and they work for me. And I think these are new. I think these will be new for you. So if you think they're going to work for you, use them, try them. And, and hopefully, yeah, as I say, it offers something new. So there's a bit of novelty um, about it. Okay. One is this, to break the procrastination. Because when I had to hand in a paper, those last two or three days where I just went hell for leather, I had weeks, if not maybe a month, month and a half, potentially two months before I needed to hand these things in. So I had plenty of time. So one of the tools, one of the techniques, one of the strategies I came up with was this. As soon as I got um, the next, the overview of the next assignment, as soon as that information came through, I was to do the bare minimum. So I think what was coupled in my mind was once I started the assignment, started to understand it, I started work. So flipping that on its head, you don't want to be working on it. 
So you leave it to the point where you need to work on it, but at least freeing up 80% of your time to be able to do nothing, right? But of course, that's procrastination and that doesn't work. So what my first strategy was to look at what the assignment was about, but, but under the rule that I would do nothing about it. And that was the key thing, because I think there was a fear that once I start to look at it, I'd start to have to do something. So I took away that have to do something. So what I did and what my tactic is and what I do now is frame it that what is the minimum possible thing that I can do? So in that case, it would be just read the assignment. Don't do anything, just read it. And when you know that that's your next step and it's the minimum minimum possible thing you can do and you make that the maximum thing that you do, it makes it super easy. And then the next time it would be um, maybe just draft up in no more than one or two sentences what I think the first page is going to look like in terms of content. And then that's it, walk away. So you're sort of making a deal to do something. Now the key thing is all those steps that you do, you're going to do anyway. But what you're doing is you're pulling them forwards but you're making them um, just non-arduous. Is that an expression? Is that a term? But you're making them easy. So make them as easy as possible. Do the smallest possible thing. So as I say, for my first steps, it was don't write anything. Just for the very first step, just look at it. That's it. But the key thing is my brain would start thinking about stuff anyway, and I'd start to get ideas. And I might jot them down. But the thing is, I was under no pressure. Where before, when I started to look at the assignment, I felt the normal pressure. Okay, let me go through another one. The other thing I started to do, and I think this is the biggie, is I'm always worried about not getting things right. And the best way to reduce not getting things right is do your best work possible. So start with doing your best work possible. That was the mindset. I think that's wrong. Because I think that perpetuates um, procrastination. It fuels procrastination. So because you're trying to do your best work possible right off the bat, so here's the other technique I came up with. Say it was a 5,000 word essay. I would then go have my first cut at it, but I want to write the worst version of what I can do. So rather than spending all that mental energy that it would take for me to try and write the best version right off the bat, before I even knew what I was doing, because you know this, when you write your first draft of something, You've only got an idea of what you might be writing about, not when you start, but when you finish that first draft. That's why your second draft and your third draft look so different. Your third draft looks so different from your second. Your second looks so different from your first. So why start with perfect? You can't. Because I think when you have that mindset, or for me, it was an inhibitor to both starting and enjoying the process. So I gave my permission gave myself permission to write the worst possible essay, right at the start, right off the bat. If it required 5,000 words, I'd only do 1,000. I wouldn't worry about spelling mistakes. I wouldn't worry about just, you know, anything. The flow, I wouldn't worry about the structure, that one point leads into another. I'd just write and give myself permission to come up with the worst thing possible. Now, here's the thing. When you've done that, and it won't take long to do, you've got two choices. You either clean what you've done, or you just get rid of it because you haven't lost that much time on it. It might be an hour, might be an hour and a half, just delete it, don't worry about it. Because sometimes reverse engineering and cleaning it will take more time than just doing it. But the thing is you've broken the ice, and the fact that you've given yourself permission to do the worst possible version right off the bat means you're probably not waiting until those last couple of days before something's due. You can do that early on and you've got no pressure because if you do your worst possible version and for whatever reason you've got an adverse, like a 
physical reaction to it. You can just set it aside, delete it, leave it, come back to it after a week. But the very fact that you've done it, you've actually started to polish the thinking in your mind about what it is that you need to do because you know what not to do. So you've closed down some avenues. You've shut down some thought patterns because you know that they don't work. Anyway, that is my final tip. Give yourself permission and just do it. Write the worst possible stuff. It's kind of like that technique. I don't know if you've heard of it called anti-solution brainstorming. Sometimes when you're trying to come up with a solution, sometimes it's good to flip it on its head and go, well, how do we actually make the thing worse? And then you look at all the ways you can make it worse and you go, how do we stop those things from happening? And that gives us a solution about what we need to do to make it better. How do we break it? How do we stop those things from breaking? That gets us to better. So sometimes just flipping it on its head. And that's what this is like. Rather than trying to write the best work or do the best work you can right off the bat, just give yourself permission to do anything. Even go, go, go further than that. Write the worst thing you can write. And that breaks the ice and gets it started. Okay, that's it. Break things into the smallest possible chunks and promise yourself you'll do nothing more than the smallest possible chunk. Might be just looking at what you need to do in terms of the piece of work that you're about to do or the assignment. Then it might be a couple of sentences on the sorts of things you might talk about. And then, and this was the biggie for me, giving myself permission to do the worst possible version and just get that done. And it only took an hour, hour and a half. And for whatever reason, it made a huge difference. Now, if you've been watching some of my videos, before you know, the reason why I record these videos is by and large for me, because what I'm doing is reinforcing to myself the tools, the techniques, the practices, the standards that I've adopted over the years that have worked for me. But because they work for me, then there's proof that they might work for you. So even though the premise of these videos is to reinforce those behaviors that have worked for me, steal anything that might work for you. Steal it. Use it, knowing that we've got proof behind these, these tools and concepts. That's it. That's it. If you do have any questions, throw them in the comments. If you throw any comments in the comments, I'll probably just give you a thumbs up because I appreciate that. Thank you. But if you've got any questions, I'm, I'm happy to sort of tease them out a little bit. That's it. Procrastination is, is a bit of a beast, but you can reconfigure it. You definitely can to dilute it. And, and have you work for yourself so you're not doing what I used to do. And um, yeah, 70-30, never going to forget that. All right, that's it. I'm gone. I'm out of here. Catch you in the next one. Thank you. Take care. Bye.